हाई स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम इन केमिस्ट्री क्लासेस आई एम प्रियंका जैन एंड टूडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग अव प्ले लिस्ट दैट इज थर्मोडाइनिक्स एंड दिस वीडियो दिस प्ले लिस्ट विल बी वेरी स्पेशल फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू वाई बिकॉज हियर वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द वेरी वेरी बेसिक लेवल टू द सी एस आई आर लेवल ऑल द टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट इज बीन आस्ट इन दी एस आई आर नेट एग्जाम और इन द गेट एग्जाम और इन द आई आई टी जे एम एग्जाम यू विल सी हियर ओके सो इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दीज प्ले लिस्ट ओके इफ यू आर वॉचिंग दीज वीडियो विदाउट स्कीपिंग डैम देन I can say definitely that you will get all the questions covered in your exam. No question of the thermodynamics you will skip in your incoming exam. Okay. Already I have made some videos on the thermodynamics. If you have seen my my earlier videos, I have made some videos on the thermodynamics. But today we are starting a very new playlist, and here we will go from the basic to the higher level. Okay. So don't skip any video. Try to see. all the video from the beginning till the end let's start the lecture first of all understand what is thermodynamics the basic meaning of thermodynamics is flow of heat okay so actually thermodynamics is nothing it is a branch of science we are we are dealing with the energy changes all the type of the energy changes that are taking place in a chemical or in a physical process or what are the flow of heat what heat changes taking place or which type of work is being done all the things that we see here in the thermodynamics okay before we start the thermodynamics we should know about some basic terms used in the thermodynamics because if you don't know about these terms then you cannot do thermodynamics in a very good way so if you want to understand all the concept of the thermodynamics very clearly then you should understand about these terms so i am giving you these basic terms in a very clear and very fast manner so understand them the first term is system and the surroundings what is system when you start thermodynamics you will see there are terms comes system and surrounding everywhere you will see these terms so actually what is a system actually system is nothing it is like this container of a gas okay it means any part of the matter any portion of the matter under study which is being studied by us and which is separated from rest of the universe by a boundary okay so this is called a system that we are studying okay and that is separated from the universe by this boundary so it is called a system so system may be like this or you can say suppose we are taking a cylinder okay a gas cylinder we have taken and here a piston is filled here okay piston is fitted here now by this piston we can compress or increase the volume okay so volume can increase or decrease by this piston and under this gas is being investigated so it is making a system okay so anything can be system it can be a reaction vessel it can be a engine it can be a electrochemical cell or it can be a biological cell anything can be a system that we are a studying okay now what is surrounding surrounding means the rest of the universe the rest part of universe which is in contact of system and which can exchange matter or energy with the system is called the surrounding right so surrounding may be air around it or it may be water around it anything can be a surrounding now see the second important thing that we have to study is the type of the systems the systems may be of three types basically one is called the isolated system a system which can exchange neither energy nor matter with surroundings that is called a isolated system it means any system which cannot exchange the energy or it cannot exchange the matter will be called the surrounding suppose we are taking any system okay and it is covered with the insulated walls so it is making a isolated system because now 
it is not able to exchange the energy the energy cannot pass from it and the matter cannot pass from it okay so this is called the isolated system suppose we are taking a thermos of tea okay in traveling you use a thermos of tea in which tea is filled okay so actually its walls are insulated so the heat cannot go outside or inside and the matter cannot go outside or inside so such type of systems are called isolated systems the second type of systems are called closed systems closed system means which can exchange energy but not matter with its surroundings okay which can exchange energy but not matter with its surroundings these type of systems are called closed system suppose any system that is closed with these boundaries is called a closed system okay if we are taking a cup of tea and we are placing a lid on it okay now this cup of tea can exchange the heat but it cannot exchange the matter okay so such type of systems are called closed systems the third type of system is called open system which can exchange both energy and matter with the surroundings suppose we are taking a cup of tea that is open okay this cup of tea can exchange both the vapors of the tea as well as the heat both can pass from it okay so this is a system that is called open system because it can exchange both the energy as well as the matter so it is called the open system now understand one of the term that is macroscopic properties and microscopic properties okay so see here what is macroscopic properties macroscopic means that is connected to a large level okay so macroscopic means the properties that are associated with a large number of molecules or large number of particles it means the properties that are related to the whole system related to whole system or to a large number of molecules then such type of properties are called macroscopic properties for example if we are taking a system okay if we are taking a system in which gas is filled okay then we are considering the whole gas if this is 2 liter gas then we are considering this 2 liter gas okay as a whole we are seeing its whole volume we are seeing whole, whole temperature its whole pressure so these properties are called macroscopic properties actually in chemical thermodynamics when we study chemical thermodynamics then we are studying the macroscopic properties okay so in this unit we are considering about the macroscopic properties then what are microscopic properties microscopic properties are the properties that are connected to molecular levels to a particular molecule or to a particular atom then such type of properties are called microscopic properties suppose we are considering this atom okay this atom okay we are considering the atoms their pressure their volume so these are called microscopic properties and these we study in the statistical thermodynamics okay so if you want to study the microscopic properties then you will have to consider the statistical thermodynamics that is the next unit okay and if you have not studied the statistical thermodynamics then you can watch our lectures in my channel my channel's name is priyanka jain you can visit my channel and you can see the playlist of statistical thermodynamics where you will see all its important topics and all the type of questions that has been asked in the previous year question papers now the next term is the state of a system what is a state of a system whenever we deal with the macroscopic properties okay when the macroscopic properties of the system have a definite value then we call that system is in a particular state suppose we are saying that the system has 273 kelvin temperature okay one atmospheric pressure 10 liter volume then we are calling that system is in a state this is we calling the state a okay when we call a state it is defined by some of the properties these are the macroscopic properties that are defining a state and suppose we are changing the temperature from 273 to 300 kelvin then we are calling that the system is going to another state okay it means with changing these properties the system is going from the state a to state b 
so these properties are called state variables state variables means the properties that are changing with changing the state of the system these properties changes so these are called state variables so these properties are temperature pressure volume mass composition these all are the state variables okay actually it is not necessary that all the state variables we will have to specify it some of these are interdependent for example we know equation pv is equal to nrt here in this equation p v and t are interrelated if we know pressure and temperature then we can calculate v so we call that p and t are independent variables and v is dependent variable now we comes to a very important thing extensive and intensive properties very very important thing because generally a two marks question has been asked from this topic okay if you know a little bit about the extensive and intensive property then you can cover your marks okay actually what is extensive property extensive property extensive means the properties that depends upon the amount of substance in the system okay it depends upon the amount of the system suppose we are taking a system and in this system 20 liter volume is present okay and we are dividing this system into two parts then these both parts will have different volumes it cannot happen that both the parts will have 20 liter volume no it cannot happen suppose it may have 10 liter it may have 10 liter or it may have 8 liter it may have 12 liter or it may have 12 liter it may have 8 liter anything can happen it means with dividing the system the property is being divided it means y is such a way y is equal to y dash plus y double dash in this way is properties dividing so these type of properties are called extensive properties okay means it depends upon the amount of substance so the example of such type of properties are gibbs free energy internal energy enthalpy heat capacity mass volume energy force these whole properties number of moles these whole properties depends upon the amount so these are called extensive properties now second type of properties are called the intensive properties intensive properties means that does not depends upon amount of system these properties does not depends upon the amount of substance present in the system for example if you are seeing the temperature okay suppose this system has 273 kelvin temperature okay if you are dividing the system then can you assume that the temperature will divide can you assume that this will this part will have 150 kelvin and this part will have 150 kelvin no it cannot happen actually both the parts will have 273 kelvin temperature okay how much you divide it the temperature will remain fixed it is 273 kelvin so we cannot divide the temperature okay by dividing the system it does not depends upon the amount of substance so it is an intensive properties like temperature pressure is an intensive property density viscosity refractive index surface tension and specific heat molar volume molar heat capacity these all are called the intensive properties one thing you should remember here whenever you have given the term molar or specific or per mole any time you have given then such type of properties are called the intensive properties okay one more important thing you should know that the ratio of extensive properties ratio of extensive properties is actually a intensive property for example if you divide mass by volume both are the extensive properties if you divide them you are getting the density and density is the intensive property now see one more important term that is thermodynamic processes what is thermodynamic process when a system goes from one state to another this process is called the thermodynamic process this may be of different type one is called isothermal process whenever in a process the temperature remains constant okay whenever the temperature is constant throughout the process then such type of systems are called the isothermal process it means in whole the process dt will be equal to 0 second type of process is called adiabatic process adiabatic process means 
no heat transfer it means neither heat goes outside nor inside it means there is no heat transfer in this type of processes neither heat can evolve nor heat can be absorbed so such type of processes are called adiabatic processes it means in adiabatic processes dq is equal to g the third type of processes are called isobaric isobaric processes isobaric processes means pressure is constant whenever the pressure is constant it means we can call that dp is equal to 0 then such type of processes are called isobaric similarly fourth type of process is called isochoric it means volume is constant whenever in a process the volume is constant it means dv is equal to 0 then such type of processes are called isochoric processes okay now there is one more important thing that is called reversible processes and the irreversible process a very much important thing whenever a process is carried out infinite simply slowly so that the driving force is only infinite simply greater than the opposite force then such type of processes are called the reversible processes in means in the reversible processes the driving forces are driving forces are only infinite simply greater than the opposing force the process is happening such slowly slowly for example if we are seeing a system here okay and we have to compress this piston okay we have to put this piston from here to here and we are doing it in the infinite steps such slowly slowly we are putting here the pressure okay and the system is going in this manner at each step the system is reversible then such type of processes are called the reversible processes and whenever the system is not going in this manner it means we can put the piston directly from here to directly here we can put the pressure okay we are putting a large pressure here and the piston is going from there to there okay then such type of process is called irreversible it means here the process is not happening in the several steps it is not happening in the infinite steps okay it is happening directly so such type of process is called irreversible and the reversible process happens in the so many steps suppose this is a step and this is the b between these two states between a state and the between b state there will be infinite number of the steps and each step will be reversible like this then such type of process is called the reversible process actually in the nature there is no process that is reversible ideally strictly the processes are irreversible all natural processes are irreversible okay actually the reversible processes are only theoretical that does not happens in the nature that does not happens in the nature these are only theoretical we are considering them only just so that we can understand the irreversible processes okay so this is all about the basic concepts of the thermodynamics i hope you will like this video and if you are liking these videos please comment me please share the video with more and more students thank you